Hey folks, I've got something pretty special for you today. So what we're going to be doing is a full-blown analysis of how James Bond would train. If James Bond were not a fictional person, were a real person, how would he train in the real world to develop the physical attributes that he needed? So this is something quite new. Uh, I'm a qualified strength and conditioning coach. Uh, I make my living personal training, delivering Olympic lifting coaching, all that kind of stuff. So this is probably the first time ever that a qualified strength and conditioning coach has broken down the James Bond character, looked at what his training is likely to include, and given you uh, a training program based around that that you could use if you wanted to train in the same way that 007 trains. Quite exciting, right? So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be, where possible, including either images or quotes or photos from um, films or scripts or books to sort of evidence my arguments. Uh, I'm going to be breaking down the character biography, and then I'm going to be creating a full-blown training template. Uh, so stick with me sort of over the next five minutes. I'm going to break it down for you and see what I think. So first things first, we've got character biography. So what do we know based on the photos that I've just shown is that Bond's fictional character is created, I think, 1953. I've got my notes here. Yeah, so we've got created 1953 uh, in Fleming Rotem. We've got um, the fact that he was an intelligence officer in MI6. We know this. That's his placement. That's how we know him in the role. And then we have a uh, background that he's from the, um, he used to train in the Royal Naval Reserve and got to the role of a uh, commander. Now, it's quite interesting because when we look at this, like uh, a commander in the Royal Naval Reserve would theoretically be able to command a frigate, a sub, a destroyer, which is a, a unique um, skill set and very indicative of the sort of World War II, Cold War era kind of context that um, Fleming was going for. But with that said, we're looking at James Bond, at least our generation now, from a completely different background. So it's interesting to see how some of the attributes of um, James Bond as he was sort of originally written have mixed with sort of the, um, the modern storylines that we see today. Um, but what at least we can get from this, from the Royal Naval Reserve, is that this is sort of a theme that keeps throughout um, from the most of them, is that sort of um, James Bond has a background in amphibious warfare, in intelligence... Um, deep sea diving, all these kinds of skill sets and attributes. Um, so you'll frequently see him in film swimming. It seems to be his preferred form of exercise, at least for cardiovascular training. And that is probably a link back to the fictional character biography. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I can't quite see um, Bond on a treadmill. I can't quite see the character um, cycling away at the gym. There's just something that doesn't quite scream right about that. So the the, the, the sort of bulk of that bulk of his um, cardiovascular work is going to be made up of running, swimming, that kind of stuff. What else do we know? We know that he's going to have to, because he's in the army, in the military, he's going to have to pass basic army on PFTs or personal sort of um, physical tests of his physical performance. They're going to be stuff like, you know, one and a half mile runs, press ups in one to two minutes, sit ups in one to two minutes, basic um, strength and endurance tests. So that's going to have to comp sort of um, be included in some of his training. And it's never explicitly said, but it's sort of it's implied that Bond has been in either the SAS or the SBS at some point in his past, so either the Special Air Service or the Special Boat Service. And we know this at least because Casino Royale, we've got Vespa Lynn sort of suggesting that um, he came from an SAS background. We've got other links to sort of in books and quotes about potentially what his background was, his links to the SAS, his links to sort of a special air service. So what we've got going on here is if he had to do that, then we know his physical training must have prepared him for that. And what's quite good about this is that we know today loosely what SAS selection involves, so we can get sort of get a, a fair estimate of what his fitness levels and his strength levels must have had to be like to prepare for that. Um, so what we know is that at least for the first sort of the first aptitude phase, the first four weeks, he'll have had to do at least five long marches. So we're talking 23 to 28 kilometers um, in battle dress. So ranging somewhere between 18 and 25 kg. So that is, you know, they're, they're significant distances. You're talking half to full marathon kind of distances um, in weighted gear. Uh, so these are huge endurance events, um, really, really like sort of um, demanding of the cardiovascular system, of the muscular endurance systems, and also very psychologically demanding. So this is the first aspect of the training. We also know that because of that, he's going to have to pass a UK Special Forces test. Uh, 
uh, UK Special Forces swimming test, should I say. Uh, and that is, it's going to be nine minutes treading water, followed by a 500 meter swim in combat gear. So again, a lot of emphasis on weighted combat gear equipment, endurance tests, specifically in regards to swimming, like we mentioned earlier. So that's going to have to be another part of his training that we've got to incorporate. Plus, on top of that, he's got to incorporate skills training into this regime. So the training that he does can't be too demanding of his central nervous system or his muscular system to impede his main skill sets, such as escape and evade, parachuting, orienteering, navigating, patrol skills, survival, contact drills, etc, etc. So when we put all this together, we've got a really complex picture of what we might need to include. Um, so this is it's going to be quite tough. I'm looking at this from a very practical perspective about what a real life James Bond would have to do to achieve this. Um, and I'm going to be realistic as it's going to be a full-time program. So I'm going to show you a couple more pictures and then I'm going to jump straight into the program that he would hypothetically follow. Right, I promised you guys I was going to draw you up a program and here it is, the fully drawn up program of what I would do if I was putting together a conditioning session to fill the specific demands of James Bond and the roles that he needs to play. So, what we got, I've drawn it up. This is a, it's a full-time program, there's no way of getting around this, and I divide it into three parts. There's an AM training session, a midday training session, and a PM training session every single day. The typical format you'll find is uh, your AM session, what I've drawn up is, it's gonna be cardiovascular based. Uh, your midday session is more going to be skills based. So this is going to be longer in duration, skills development specific to the roles of intelligence, uh, military performance. This is stuff, all in all, that I do not know enough about. So all I've just written is skills development to encompass that. Um, and then at the end, I've got specific uh, strength drills that are going to benefit Bond's training. So this is what I'm going to walk you through. What I've done is I've put the uh, cardiovascular exercises mainly as swimming and running. So I've got a long swim, a long run, uh, a medium sort of a middle distance swim on Wednesday. Thursday, you've got a middle distance run. Friday, you've got a shorter run and a shorter swim. And then on Saturday, we've got a long march. Um, now, distances wise for all of them, what I'm going to do in terms of your long swim, going to be one to two miles uh, on Monday. Your Tuesday running is going to be a long run, 10 to 20 miles. Wednesday, you're going to go for a middle distance swim. It's going to be about 500 meters. Thursday is going to be a middle distance run, about 10 kilometers. Friday, as I said, they're both shorter distances. So these are probably going to be sprint intervals, mainly because, as we know from Bond, he runs about a lot. He's either chasing someone, being chased by someone, jumping off a boat, on a boat, swimming here, swimming there. There's a lot of chase. There's a lot of intervals. There's a lot of high intensity work. So it makes sense to get some sprints in there as well. So I've got a full graduation of difficulties of intensities and of distances across swimming and running, which are his sort of two broad modal domains that he wants to develop. Uh, Saturday, the biggest one is the long march. As we talked about in the um, SAS selection stuff, you need to have that long march, especially something between 20 to 50 kilometers. Um, this isn't something you can do regularly multiple times each week or you will just batter yourself, but on a Saturday, at the end of the week, it could be possible to do this. Now, by no means am I necessarily recommending this program. This is a this would be something that you'd have to do after building up for many, many years. It would be it's going to be an extremely demanding program. This is just remember, it's a hypothetical description of what James Bond might do if he was training. So that's what I would have him doing for cardiovascular work. A.M. Uh, his Sunday, he could have a day off. Why not? Everyone deserves a rest day. Um, so yeah, then his midday would be filled with the skills development that I mentioned. Typically something in the region of three to four hours. Uh, then we've got PM. See, the trick is, what I've done with my PMs is I've incorporated some strength work. What we need to do, though, is make sure that the strength work doesn't counteract anything else that he's doing. So I've, I've programmed in, as you can say, three sessions. One on Monday, one on Wednesday, and one on Thursday. Now, what you should be able to read here... The first session is strength endurance. So it's all about pull-ups, press-ups, and sit-ups. Um, if you remember, is it Skyfall? We all know that Bond at least has to do some kind of um, pull-ups in his preparation, in his testing. So it's going to make sense he gets them in. For his army physical fitness test, there's going to have to be press-ups and sit-ups. These are all done muscular endurance kind of performance-wise. So for Monday, I've got three sets of each of them, three sets of max pull-ups, three sets of 20 press-ups, three sets of 30 sit-ups to sort of hit those demands. Wednesday, he's going to want a little bit of leg strength. Bond is typically jumping from place to place, from rooftop to rooftop, building to building, especially if you just wrote, watch the um, opening sequence of uh, 
Spectre, then you know there's a lot of jumping, a lot of moving about in there. So leg strength is going to be a big part of that. So I've programmed in a healthy amount of squats. I've given five sets of three at about 85% of his one rep max. That's what I'd recommend. It's going to allow for enough leg strength, enough development, without impeding on the rest of his cardiovascular training and his skills development. Uh, and then to finish off the week, on your Thursday, I've got another strength endurance session, so pull-ups, press-ups, and sit-ups. Um, but this time I've just put, you're going to do as many pull-ups as you can in two minutes, as many press-ups as you can in two minutes, and as many sit-ups as you can in two minutes. And they will be your three exercises. So short, sweet, and all about the muscular endurance and those specific muscles that are relevant to the performance fitness test. And that is your full program, okay? So there's three strength sessions, there's six cardiovascular sessions, and then there's skills development pretty much every day of the week, with the exception of Sunday as a rest day. And that is how I'd structure the program. That is pre that is pretty much based on the evidence that I've looked at, that I know about Bond's past and that we know from the books, from looking online, from looking at the films. That is as close to, as close to damn it as I can get as a strength and conditioning coach, analyzing the way that James Bond would train if he were alive in real life. So that's it, folks. If you like this video, if you thought it was kind of interesting, a little bit quirky, uh, then please like below. Give me a subscribe if you want to see some more information. And feel free to suggest anyone else, fiction or real life, that you'd like to see what I think they train like. See you later, guys.